I don't know how to explain it. It's like waking up on a tropical island after an apocalypse. Pulang semua, ditinggalin. Ya, karena tidak ada tamu. Untuk mencari uang 10.000 aja sudah sangat berat karena tidak ada kemasukan yang bisa kita cari. Untuk gilai air sih. Semoga corona cepat. Itu ya. Jadi sendiri karena dulu ramai banget. Selamat siang. Ada apa? You don't like that, do you? No, it's cringy. Why is it cringy? It's just cringy when you say it. What? I'm trying to learn the language. <laughs> uh, welcome back to Lombok. We are on the island, one of the three gillies just off the coast of Lombok. We're on Gili Ayer. And uh, yeah, we just came for a quick weekend getaway. A staycation? Yeah, you could say that. It's still in Lombok. We didn't have to get like a COVID test or anything, which is cool. Um, as you can see, it is super quiet. It's really weird. Every time I've come to the Gillies, whether it's here on Gili Ayer or Gili Chuangan, like Layla was just saying, it's usually thriving with tourists. Like you would have loads of people on bikes riding around everywhere. All the restaurants would be open. Everything's just kind of like buzzing and it's like a proper tropical paradise. So yeah, this is going to be weird to see it like this and explore uh, a tropical island when it's like deserted. There's literally nothing going on. Ask any seasoned traveler around the world about the Gillies and they'll smile. Ah yes, I remember my time in the Gillies. In fact, these three small islands sitting off the coast of Lombok are now so well known, they enjoy a notoriety and status similar to Bali. Even your grandparents have heard about the Gillies. Beautiful blue ass water, white sands, green palms swaying in the breeze, beautiful people, killer sunsets, rowdy parties. This is what the Gillies have always been synonymous with. They're a slice of paradise and the very best place to take a break and chill out. I mean, just look at the place we were staying in. I really hate to get all influencer on you, but look at this place. <laughs> this is so nice. Guests. <laughs> it was soon very clear that we didn't have any other guests to worry about here. On the first morning, we set off on our bikes, as anyone does on the Gillies, we go. looking to explore the island. Alrighty, heading out on the little bike ride around the island, because that is that's what you do when you come to Gilea. You just chill and ride around on a bike. I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. That is definitely one of the great things about these three islands. There are no motorbikes or cars. The only way to get around is by horse, walking, or cycling. Uh, oh dear, bumpy. Oh dear, go through. <laughs> I think this is where we took that photo. Eh? Yeah, I think this is it, with the palm trees. The last time I was on Giliaya was back in 2018 when me and Layla were just getting to know each other. Hey guys! We're hey guys! We are Josh in. And Layla, we're in Giliaya. 
We have fond memories of cycling around, taking photos, exploring, enjoying the unique vibe the island has. Fast forward to 2021 and not too much has changed for us. Apart from the fact Leila now doesn't mind being in my stupid videos. A little bit windy. <laughs> what? <laughs> we still love exploring together, taking photos. It's what we do best. Cool. Let me just do some landscape. So I'm not conforming to the Instagram algorithm, okay? Right, you lead the way. You're the best navigator. Hey. What was that? No, nothing, nothing. <laughs> However, while this may have been a fantastic romantic getaway for us, a chance to really let our hair down and chill out, it was clear from the get go that things have really changed here. It's just eerily quiet. It's so quiet, everything is closed. There's no one around. It's kind of probably what the Gillies originally felt like, which was like a deserted tropical island. But yeah, like all these places, they're just shut up. I'm so used to seeing the Gillies as like a thriving tourist hotspot, like people everywhere from all around the world and you know all of these would be full up it's the middle of the day me and Layla won't be able to find anywhere to sit but instead it's all just empty there's a, horse getting... oh, there's a horse getting a bath yes get it huh. is it your horse yes. ah what's his name huh? his name Say again? Numata. Numata. Yeah. Ah. He likes the water, hey? Yeah. <laughs> that is nice. Can I stroke him or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Time. Hello. How are you? He's not too sure. <laughs> ah, yeah, okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. What do you do on the island for, for work? What do you do with... No, we don't have a... Um, no, no job like this time. Yeah. Because it's not tourist. Actually, we're yeah. working for the tourists. Of course. We bring the tourists, but right now, like almost like, yeah, like already one year. One year, yeah, yeah it's crazy. We don't, we don't have a uh, income. No. It's hard, yeah? yeah it's hard. So you look the hard for job. Yeah. Because we don't have uh, like any money to buy them some grass, something like uh, that. Ah, okay. But sometimes we have a donation from, um, we have like a... Uh, Maybe from uh, yeah. Java, they come sometimes? No, from, uh, we have somebody from America, like, send us like oh. every 20 days. Oh, okay. Give him like a rice powder for the horse. Oh, nice. Oh, not for us, but for the horse. Okay, good. Because, yeah, because the horse is really like idle horse. No yeah. So last last year in March, when the pandemic happened, did, it, did you find that it happened really quickly and suddenly there's no tourists or...? Yeah, it's really quickly when there's pandemic and then all tourists is gone from the island. All gone. Yeah, all gone. So until now is now it's almost March again. Yeah, soon. It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. I feel sorry for you guys. Yeah. I hope I hope sometime soon that people come back. Yeah. It's, it's very different to last time we were here. It's so quiet. Yeah, last time. Now it's really quiet. If you come here, like you're on island now. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> well, hopefully soon they come back. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, man. You take care. <laughs> As you can imagine, it's like if your livelihood and income relies on tourists, people like you and me, to suddenly have that pulled from underneath you like a rug, like it's just not ideal. It's very difficult. And in the short time that I've been here back in Lombok for a few months, 
I keep hearing about it, like people are struggling and the longer this goes on, the more and more they struggle. It's not like in the UK or another Western country where there's a lot of financial support from the government. They try and do bits and bobs, and but it's, it's very different, you know? People are struggling. So hopefully, I mean, just the sooner the better people come back. Look at it. Everywhere just empty. This place would usually be thriving. It's so, it's so weird and surreal. Just us. Did you hear that guy when he was like, now it's like your own private island? Yeah. I was like, yeah, it's literally like, it is. <laughs> the guy was right. We really did have the whole place to ourselves. Nowadays, there are no streets bustling with tourists from all over the world. They're empty. Open signs remain, but many bars have been shut. The tables and chairs stacked, or in some cases, eerily left exactly where they were one year ago. It's like, it reminds me of like seeing photos where a natural disaster has happened and everyone's just fled the area. I guess COVID is a natural disaster. Look at this. Boats sit idly in the harbour. Neglected swimming pools are filled with stagnant water. Like the rest of the world, normal life has been put on hold here. This whole stretch of deserted beach. Just tarpaulins down. Nothing going on. It's so strange. It's really eerie, to be honest. It's like, I don't know how to explain it, it's like waking up on a tropical island after an apocalypse, if that makes sense. Like, it's just us. Everything's, yeah, really, really weird. Speaking with more locals and islanders, we began to build up a picture of what life was like here when the pandemic hit and what it was like to live here during the months after. So it was low tourist season, uh, still the island was alive and uh, people were around. And then, um, and then the pandemic becomes a bigger and bigger thing. And um, the government is uncertain of what's going to happen. We are all uncertain about what is going to happen. It's quite an absurd feeling actually. Uh, uh, we didn't see it coming, obviously. Um, it was hard in the beginning. Um, saying goodbye to friends and then you, you, you don't know when you are going to meet them again. So I remember two or three weeks of extreme stress where we didn't know what, what to do. Uh, most of the people would discuss all the time um, that are you staying or are you leaving? What are the pros and cons? Trying to predict the future. Sedikit demi sedikit mulai balik ke negara masing-masing karena Gili sudah di, akan, akan di lockdown. In those two weeks, we saw a very lively island dying off, literally. The, the beaches were um, uh, completely silent, the music was down, uh, there was not that many people around. I remember a couple of days where a lot of tourists left, in, in two days, in fact, most or all of the tourists left. And then the following two weeks, a lot of workers from Lombok um, we're leaving as well as the one Varung after the other were closing or different businesses, accommodation, uh, construction was frozen. With so many businesses closed, it was proving hard to find a place to eat. We were hoping to eat here, but yeah, I don't think that's open. A lot of places closed right now. Bit more, bit more difficult to be spontaneous with your food when everywhere's closed. Finally, we found a local place called Warung Parida. I've got satu telur, ayam, tempeh, tahu, and nasi. Yeah, not bad, hey? 
We have been finding it quite difficult to find places that are open, haven't we? Mm -hmm. um, so you can't just like look on Google Maps and be like, oh, that looks good, great reviews, let's eat there. It's actually turning into more of like, just cycle around and find somewhere that's open. Uh, I mean, I don't think you can be picky at this point. Like, you just kind of have to eat wherever's open by the looks of it. It's good? Yeah, sweet. Warung, like local food, like it's always good to be fair. Super tasty. The food was delicious and we left with full bellies and warm smiles, knowing full well that we would definitely come back here on our next visit. Danny Mikasi. Yeah, hi, man. Hi. See you. <laughs> Alrighty. However, just a few weeks after eating here, it too was closed. Keeping your business open in a pandemic with little to no customers is tough. For Mona, the cook at local Burung Oranges, the changes have been vast. Sibuk banget. Banyak belum tamu trip dari Trawangan masuk ke sini. Terus belum tamu-tamu yang diving, ya sering bawa tamunya juga ke sini, aduh banyak sekali dah. Non stop sampai jam 11 malam, terkadang sampai jam 12 malam dari pagi. Aduh, sepi. <laughs> sepi kemasukan udah, aduh. Lebih banyak pengeluaran dari daripada kemasukan selama ini, aduh. Parah dah. There's also Yati, the beloved burger lady of Giliaya. Karena dulu saya kan jualan di depan Ocean Five, di depan counter tiket itu. Di sana ada orang diving nyoba satu satu orang, terus dia suka, terus dia kasih tahu sesama divingnya. Akhirnya semua ke sana. Despite her popularity amongst the islanders, even she has noticed a big difference. Sebelum pandemik sibuk banget, kayak biar ditutup ini apa kerennya ini. Pasti orang dibuka terus nanya masih bukan dah. Sekarang setelah pandemi sepi banget. For Gordon, a boat captain running snorkeling tours, work has pretty much dried up. Uh, dampak dari pandemi sangat besar. Sekarang dulu kita aja biasanya setiap hari tiga kali sampai empat kali keluar bawa tamu snorkeling yang private one. Tapi setelah pandemi sekarang totally zero. Ya, jadi tidak ada yang bisa kita bawa pergi untuk snorkeling dan teman-teman juga tidak ada pekerjaan selain dari snorkeling. Jadi selama pandemi ini kita tidak ada kemasukan untuk mencari uang 10.000 aja sudah sangat berat karena tidak ada kemasukan yang bisa kita cari. Time and again we heard the same stories about how good business used to be and now how tough it was. Anu sih yang paling kena dampak tuh perusahaan besar. Sander, who owns Oceans 5, it's one of the biggest dive shops on the island. He's still going, but he's had to restructure his business completely. Have a nice dive! Yay! Now everyone is in the surviving mode. Yeah. Yeah, so that means you have, normally you have 40 staff or local staff and 10 westerns, and now we do everything with 10 people. For many others, it simply hasn't been sustainable to remain open at all. Perubahannya, sepi banget perubahannya. Banyak deh. Semua nutup, semua banyak yang bangkrut. Pulang semua, ditinggalin. Ya, karena tidak ada tamu. Ada yang balik ke negaranya, ada yang balik Bali, soalnya banyak orang Bali juga yang punya kan. Ada yang orang yang di sini banyak yang tinggal di Lombok. Ya. Kayaknya ditinggalin aja dah. With so many people losing their jobs and their businesses, leaving the islands, what were they doing now? Because of the corona, so people change their lifestyle. So right now they start to do like coconut and then grow some potatoes, corn with garden, yeah. And then like I'm before I have bangalow, now I, I do cow palm. So normally we not do this when tourists coming. So we hope in the future uh, the situation getting normal soon. So we have 
we can have our normal life again. Yeah. yeah. Have your businesses back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of too. course. Cows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can confirm that there are definitely cows on the island. No idea how this is for you guys watching. Just listening to me bumping along in the darkness. Great content. Oh my god. Oh, it's a cow. Holy shit. Did you see that? Sorry, I really scared him. I mean, he scared me as much as I scared him. Just cycling along the path and there's a rogue cow. I was like, what the fuck is that? So, many who used to work in tourism have now turned back to what things were like before the tourists ever arrived. Agriculture, that's farming, fishing, it's all back in business. Of course, this doesn't pay nearly as well as a job in tourism, but people are just doing whatever they can to survive and stay afloat. Kalau pekerjaan sekarang cukup susah, kita hanya mengandalkan pergi nelayan aja. Orang-orang di sana pergi nelayan sehabis pandemi ya. Pergi melaut lagi. Kalau yang enggak bisa jadi nelayan, yang enggak ada lahan bertani, mereka sekarang tidak ada kerja. Iya, tidak ada kerja. Tidak ada pemasukan. For those who have lost pretty much everything, there is a little help. Uh, selama pandemi ada bantuan dari pemerintah, kadang ada juga dari dinas pariwisata dibantu masyarakat khususnya dari Gilair ya. Bantuannya seperti beras buat makan, minyak, air, telur kayak gitu. Ada juga uang dikasih per bulan ya untuk masyarakat Gilair. Kalau cukup Masalah cukup dan cukupnya dicukupin aja ya. <laughs> Dibuat cukup aja ya, mau gimana lagi. Syukur kita dibantu kan. With the bars remaining so empty and desolate, it's the cats who rule the island now. They're everywhere. Yeah, I think this guy had a rough night last night. He had one too many drinks. Hey, mate. Sorry, I, I think it's time to go home now. Mate? Seriously, you can't enjoy your meal in peace without one of these guys turning up. Ah, uh, uh, I was going to eat this. I was going to eat it. <laughs> yep, that's it. Yep, I'll go clean it for you, bro. I guess we just wait for the water. Yeah, I know, man. I'm just give me a second. I'm just trying to clean it for you so your mouth doesn't explode. Let's try that. Yeah, come on then. Come on. Mmm. Delicious, eh? Not too spicy for you? You eating it already? No, that's a camera. <laughs> okay, that's, that's all I got. Sorry, man. Yeah, I know, it's nice, though. Cats aren't the only wild animal thriving here. With no tourists, the islands have been given a unique opportunity to take a step back and just breathe. Below the waves, the recovery is well underway. Tidak terlalu banyak orang diving, jadi ikan-ikan datang ke pinggiran. Soalnya uh, tidak terlalu banyak orang yang diving kan. Kalau terlalu banyak orang diving, kadang menyentuh karang atau gimana banyak ya. kalau ikannya sih makin banyak ya makin banyak yang datang ya kelihatan lebih banyak schooling ikan di setiap dive site karena adanya pengurangan orang snorkeling dan orang diving the gillies have long been known for their exceptional display of marine wildlife and precious coral reefs it was here in 2018 
I had one of my first and most memorable underwater encounters. This is where, it was on this side of the island, I found the clownfish that time. I finally, I've been snorkeling for a long time, like here in the Gillies and everywhere I've traveled. I finally found clownfish. Little Nemo clownfish, I'm so excited. They're pretty rare. Look at this. That's so cool. <laughs> I like clownfish. Not just because of Finding Nemo, okay? I've always liked clownfish. Uh, it probably was because of Finding Nemo. We headed out with boat captain Gordon and marine conservationist Andre to see some of the changes for ourselves. <laughs> All right, we are heading out for some snorkeling around the Gillies. Andre, what do you think we're going to find? What are you hoping to find today? Sharks. Sharks? Manta rays. Yeah. And a blue whale. Oh, a blue whale. Yes. I've seen them all the time here, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. Uh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Stop just off Gilly Menno. Yeah. Andre, what's this usually like before the pandemic? What was happening? Uh, it's a, normally like 20 boats here around this area. Um, snorkeling trips, diving. Yeah. Um, yeah, the famous statues just there, like circled statues. Yeah. Um, but today it's only us. There's literally have, no one else here. Yeah, we have the area for us. So hopefully there will be a lot of things to see. Yeah, man. Yeah, the water looks really clear. That's uh, you can literally see the coral like from here. Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, let's do it. Right. <laughs> the snorkeling. Put my uh, clown shoes on. You you just lose like all street cred with the fish. Like as soon as they as soon as they see you with like, these on, they're like, who they're is like, this loser? They're just like, nah, bro. We're not chilling with you. Water here was ridiculously clear. The bluest of blue ass water you've ever seen. The divers were right. The fish were back in abundance. Everywhere you looked, there were huge schools, pristine coral, turtles. It's safe to say we were not disappointed. We spent a few hours sailing around the Three Gillies, checking out various dive spots and enjoying what was a very unique opportunity of having the whole place to ourselves. beautiful part of the world I don't know what else to tell you like it's just it's so nice here. it really is beautiful there was a time not so long ago when this was actually the norm around the Gillies kalau awal-awal kerja di diving saya divingnya mulai tahun 1999 ya saya mulai diving itu dari tahun itu karangnya sangat bagus Blue coralnya, karang birunya di mana-mana di 30 banyak sekali. Bisa dikatakan 100% itu karang biru mutar di 30. Terus itu bertahannya sampai kalau enggak salah tahun uh, 2003. Mulai orang banyak diving kan. Terus karangnya udah mulai agak yang mulai rusak. The Gillies is a growing tourism destination. So we had 
like so many tourists coming in, especially from Bali with the fast boat, and thousands of them coming in every day. Picture this, six sprightly British lads coming to visit the Gillies in 2017. They're here to drink, to party, and naturally, to see some of the beauty of the islands. They don't know any better and before you know it, they're in the sea, crumbling coral and touching turtles. One of them may even have made a YouTube video about it. Times this by a couple of thousand people arriving every single day and you see the problem here. This was turning into a disaster for the local ecosystem. The number of visitors to the Gillies was, quite frankly, becoming unsustainable. If this had carried on unchecked for another 10 or 20 years, then this may very well have been gone for good. Kalau punah apalagi yang akan kita jual gitu loh. Karena di tiga gili ini kan yang dijual uh, kondisi perairan. Clearly, the pandemic had enforced a much needed breather for the local ecosystem. Uh, istilahnya untuk uh, prinsip konservasi dapat kita terapkan pada saat masa pandemi. Nah, di mana uh, pada saat masa pandemi kita bisa melakukan observasi kemudian uh, tidak tidak terlalu ramai aktivitas otomatis uh, kita melakukan rehabilitasi kemudian melakukan pemeliharaan terhadap ekosistem dan habitat yang ada di perairan itu uh, akan lebih mudah this year if there are no more or there are not a lot of tourists coming in maybe uh, the gillies can be a very good diving destination in the future because the biodiversity is slowly recovering. This glimpse of a revived and thriving underwater world hooked me in straight away. I wanted to see more. Unsurprisingly, the Gillies are considered one of the best places to learn to dive in Indonesia and indeed all of Southeast Asia. You'll find plenty of dive shops just on Gili Aya. So hi, my name is Musa and I... Eh, hey, sorry. Bahasa. Bahasa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perkenalkan nama saya, eh, ulang ya. When we met Musa, it wasn't that long before plans were in motion. Sebelum pandemi, uh, biasanya kalau di diving industry, kita dapat banyak diver, ya. Sekitar per hari kita bisa sampai mungkin 40 sampai 60 diver per hari. Dan setelah pandemi datang, uh, sekarang hampir satu tahun kita hanya dapat mungkin 20 diver saja. 20 divers? Now well, let's make 21. Selamat pagi. Another. That's not so beautiful. I was going to say another beautiful morning. Uh, we had a lot of rain last night here on Giliaya, but it's another morning nonetheless. And today I'm very excited because I'm going to go do my my paddy open water diving course because fuck it why not <laughs> um obviously been talking with musa tim tam a few a few of the divers and the gillies really is like the perfect place to learn it's it's super cheap like especially right now it's even cheaper than usual because of the corona prices um beautiful coral beautiful sea no better place to learn. I'm very excited, a little bit nervous, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. And like moving out to, to Lombok, it was like high on my to-do list for this year. So finally happening. Okay, I think, yeah, this is a place, Blue Marine Dive, sweet. All right, just sign my life away. There you go. Moose is back. <laughs> back again. Yeah. You're going to be teaching me how to dive. Yeah. Are you just telling me how excited you are because this is your first one in a few months. Yes, a few a few months already yes. since my last open water course. Yeah. Awesome. What's uh, what's the basics of the three days? What do we have to do? Um, so basically, this morning is going to be videos and knowledge reviews. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we're going to go to the pool. And after that, the ocean in the afternoon. Yeah. So the skills we do in the pool, we will be doing in the ocean. Awesome. Second day is the same, similar. Quizzes and exams involved. Yeah. Swims also. Okay, awesome. And last days, you'll be diving basically too, for 
two, uh, two time to die basically. Sweet. Yeah. I'm very excited. Sounds good. <laughs> Yui! <Yahoo! laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time to watch the videos, I guess. Oh yeah. Just sign my life away. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Over the next three days, I had a brilliant time. Okay, maybe not watching these safety videos, but the rest was a lot of fun. I got to know the gear very graciously. <laughs> there, there we go. go. And over the course of several dives, I accidentally fell in love with scuba diving. Let's do it. Go and diving. Let's go diving. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but there's just something about the whole experience of getting your gear ready, loading it onto the boat and setting off. vibes on the boat, the excitement and chat about what you might see. Everybody's getting ready. Where are we? Hallig Reef. Hallig Reef. Chances of baby sharks. Yeah. Turtles. Cloud finish. <laughs> might find Nemo. <laughs> Another dive. I hope so we can find an octopus. Octopus? Octopus, yes. cut the fish. <laughs> I hope so, eh? All of you scuba diving addicts out there watching this, I get it now. I understand you. This is a different world. An experience unlike any other. I have the feeling I just started down a very deep rabbit hole. signing the forms, get my cards. From... Certification, yeah. open water diver. <laughs> I'm a diver. <laughs> I'm done. I'm finished. Open water diver now, certified. <laughs> I am officially a diver. Thank yes. you very much, everyone. The Musa. adventure starts here Thanks, now. guys. <laughs> the adventure starts here. I the think adventure starts here, I'm yeah. addicted and now every week just diving all the time. <laughs> dive, dive, dive and dive. Awesome. <laughs> That's and awesome. if uh, people are watching this and they want to come learn to dive, you guys are here on Gili Air. You're open. Yeah, open here, Gili Air, uh, Blue Marine Dive, east side of the island basically. Yes, the best place, the best instructor. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, thank you man. No problem at all. Appreciate Cheers. it. <laughs> there we go. Three days of open water diving. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm a certified diver. <laughs> that's so cool. Um, I'm buzzing. Just incredible. Like, I'm sure you saw some of the footage. What a, what an experience. I'm so happy that I did that. Here in Giliaya, like perfect place to learn. It's insanely beautiful. Musa and his team are brilliant. Yeah, what a, uh, speechless to be honest. If you want to learn to dive, this is the place to do it. With Musa and his team, 100%. Dive shops are one of the main businesses present throughout the Gillies. Naturally, they've taken a real hit. Yang lebih sedih lagi melihat kita bekerja 20 orang tim di perusahaan di Blue Marine dan sekarang 20 orang itu tidak punya pekerjaan sama sekali um, sekarang yang bisa bekerja cuma dua atau tiga orang saja jadi impact pandemi ini sangat besar menurut saya Speaking with Sander, the owner of Oceans 5 it was uncertain when businesses will return to normal again uh, we are in the tourist sector, we want to have people who come here to visit us. But at this moment, 
Yeah, when you look at the, um, the tourist sector in the national GDP of Indonesia, it's only 5%. So Indonesia is not really interested in supporting the tourist industry, of course. Yeah, maybe supporting Bali, but what are the gillies in money-wise for the Indonesia economy? That's nothing. It may surprise you, uh, definitely surprise me, to know that Indonesia doesn't actually really rely on tourism that much. Um, I think there was a narrative of like, oh, they'll be fucked without the tourists from the West and what are they gonna do? Um, but actually, tourism only accounts for like five to 8% of the, of the whole economy in Indonesia. Um, they've got lots of, <laughs> lots of other, they've got lots of, <laughs> sorry, that really threw me. <laughs> She had a baby and she's just like, la, la, la. They have lots of other things going on. They've got vast natural resources that they're tapping into, whether that's right or wrong, you know, there's lots of other things that are driving the economy here. So actually, the Indonesian government isn't feeling too much pressure to, to reopen the borders and kickstart tourism again. Um, it's only when you zoom in to this part of Indonesia, like, your Bali's, the Gillies, Nusa Penida, Lombok. It's these specific islands where the tourism accounts for like a large part of the economy, like overwhelming majority of the economy. Um, and lots of people's jobs are tied up in that. So it's really these islands, as you've seen, that are getting hit the hardest by this pandemic. Is that a lesson that can be taken from the event of the past year that maybe Lombok, Bali and the Gillies, they can maybe look to diversify more and not rely solely on just sort of one part of tourism, one form? What do you think? That's totally, that's correct. Yeah, so, but the reason, the, the, the difficult part is how to attract local tourists. Yes, at this moment when you are in Jakarta and you can go to Bandung or you can go to Jogja, yes, and you can do that all by train. I don't know if you do need by train or by car, do you need an antigen test, but for flying you need it for sure. Yes, so there are extra costs to come to the Gillies. Yes, so if you come from Jakarta, it takes for two hours flying. Yeah, it takes and two hours from the airport to get there. You have to take a speedboat, you need an antigen test. So before you arrive here, it already costs a relative a lot of money, yet comparing when you fly to Bali and you can go anywhere where you want. Diversifying from international tourism is very difficult. Most cannot see another way for the islands to thrive. Mungkin kalau di pulau ya itu itu aja ya sama sama aja ya gitu gitu pasti pekerjaannya akan di lakuin sama orang orang di sana pasti di pariwisata itu aja. In this particular case, like the Gillies, they solely rely on tourism. They don't have anything else. They, they cannot grow coconuts or they cannot grow any crops there. So one solution is to get as many local tourists as possible. While there is talk of a push to diversify with more local tourists visiting, most are just waiting and hoping that someday soon the borders will open again. Semoga secepatnya normal dan seperti biasanya. Harapan dan harapan, semoga pandemi ini cepat berakhir. Yeah, dan turis -turis mulai datang lagi. In fact, there is a quiet confidence among some that, once given the green light, things will be right back to normal. They know that the lure of this place is impossible to resist. Kalau masalah ramai dan sepinya kita tidak terlalu panik kalau di Gili ya. Soalnya orang-orang pasti balik, pasti balik, hundred percent balik dia. Kayaknya gitu karena memang banyak sih yang mau ke sini, tapi karena Tidak boleh masuk, terus masih pandemi. Kayaknya bakal meledak deh tamu kalau udah normal. Ya yeah. yeah, kan? The problem is that the normal we saw before the pandemic wasn't necessarily a healthy thing. Having a year to reflect and think, the local community has started to address some of the key issues. What's clear is that the beauty and nature on the islands has been revived, benefiting from a lack of visitors. I hope the local people there and then the government take this chance. Because it's super quiet, it's not as hard to manage as in the normal days when a lot of people are there, a lot of stakeholders, a lot of business having their own thing. So this is really the time to uh, make a 
a master plan how to uh, move forward with a sustainability development um, principle uh, terkait dengan pelibatan masyarakat yang kita utamakan pelibatan masyarakat dan karena masyarakat di tiga gili ini nanti otomatis bagaimana mereka akan menjadi bukan sebagai penonton di uh, daerah mereka sendiri bagaimana mereka pelaku utama untuk uh, baik itu rehabilitasi kemudian baik itu uh, apa di dalam pariwisata people have woken up to this and going forward it's possible that things might well be done differently positifnya adalah sekarang kita tidak cuma fokus untuk bekerja um, karena dulu sebelum pandemi kita hanya fokus untuk mengajar, menggaet, bawa tamu. Tapi sekarang kita bisa mengasih kembali untuk lingkungan kita dengan uh, program restorasi karang. Jadi ada kesempatan ya untuk uh, melihat sisi lain. Led by Andre and Indonesia Biru, coral restoration programs are well on the way offering a glimpse of a better future. The importance of prioritizing and protecting this precious environment is starting to break through. Ultimately, people want to help and do their bit because they care about their home. There's a vibrant, resilient community here that has pulled together in the tough times. In this uh, 600 locals or 700, and about 120, 150 uh, experts. So you can imagine if you live uh, the whole year here, you know most of them, at least by face. Um, uh, stroll down to the market and you see 10 people that you know and they greet you back and that I think increases the sense of, of belonging. And so the sense of community, yeah, comes closer. You can find easier people who are interested in the same thing um, that you are and, uh, and then organize a small club uh, if you'd like to, to bring different interests together. So there is a writer's club, there's people volunteering in uh, different aspects like cleaning up the beach or to the school's library, just to mention some of the, of the recent ones. And, um, and I think that is what brings the community together. As much as you might think it's all doom and gloom when you look at the images of stagnant pools and empty, forgotten buildings, it's not. Life has carried on here. Some businesses continue to operate. Where should we, uh, where should we go for celebratory dinner and drinks tonight? There's only one place on the island that we want to go. Where's that? One, two, three. Mama, Mama pizza. pizza! Yeah! <laughs> For the second time? This is like... This is like our fifth time there, isn't it? Easily our fifth time, I think. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. A combination of genuinely good food and being one of the only restaurants still reliably open on the island, Mama Pizza is the place to be right now. You've got the cheese and potato. It's basically mashed potato with mozzarella, it's fried. It's about the most Josh Edwards thing I can think of. It's so good. Look at it. Look at that. So good. Mm -hmm. We spoke with Luca, the owner, to find out how he had managed to navigate such difficult circumstances. I think uh, every business on the island that has uh, the owner working inside is doing well. So that, that's the secret. Plus, uh, the beach helps a lot. No, people in general want to spend time on the beach. Uh, yeah, and last year was a re really good year, so what's pushing uh, it forward is savings. Yeah. 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 Do you think savings have helped you weather Ah, the man, yeah. Otherwise, I would have closed already. Yeah. And I tell you, the, some businesses that uh, they closed uh, recently because they were losing money they close just because they want to keep the capital for when everyone is gonna reopen so i think uh, in a couple of years or we don't know but uh, things will go back to as it was before and especially for Gilier, uh, is gonna be this will mean uh, a lot more growth 
So for the business and the people living out of tourism, it's gonna be good. Sometimes when you look at the abandoned parts of the islands, it can be difficult to see that future here. When you walk around and go to the north side of the island, it looks like a ghost city. Yeah, there's nothing there. Um, I'm not thinking that's a good advertisement for the island, by the way. <laughs> I questioned Luca about the abandoned buildings and stalls in various parts of the islands. Were these businesses not gone for good? As soon as they will realize uh, things are sort of going back to normal, they will quickly go back in track. So there will be more choice on the island compared to, now, to what it is now, for sure. It's clear that not all hope is lost here things will work out and find a way. But from a very selfish point of view, I kind of liked it like this. One could argue there's never been a better time to visit the island than right now. Remember that accommodation we were staying in? Yeah, that wasn't a fluke. I mean, even on this short walk to our villa, it just seems so quiet, doesn't it? To flex. <laughs> to our uh, villa. Uh, villa. Mm. Yeah, we've got a whole private villa. <laughs> One thing we did actually notice, like being serious, like when we were booking, we were looking at accommodation and they've like slashed all the prices. So we're staying in a place that usually would be out of our budget, like we wouldn't look at it. But because they've slashed the prices, it was like, ooh, actually. It's less than our price. Wait, it's, no, it's more. It's like, yeah, it's, it's like 30% of the original price. No, it's more than, it's less than 50. Wait. It's more than 50% discount. Yes, it's yeah. 30% of the original price. Oh yeah, that, no, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, it is, sorry. I can't do that. <laughs> With tourists completely out, a lot of villa owners preferred to have people staying in uh, for maintenance reasons, for a small income as well, to pay the staff at least. Um, and also because there have been experiences in the past with the earthquake uh, where there have been burglaries and so they prefer to have people in. So they gave uh, a lot of villas in very competitive prices. Just to reiterate the point that at the moment you can get ridiculously nice places to stay. Like you can rent a whole villa far more than you need <laughs> for two people for very cheap right now. It's kind of blowing my mind. Me and Leila found this place. And <laughs> yeah, this is like I, I, two floors. It's just insane. <laughs> insane is the word. Open floor living plan with room to work. A kitchen, a private pool with a water feature that lets you look like you're in that Peter Andre video. Sun lounges, tropical plants, a totally unnecessary swinging egg chair thing free breakfast and a hammock. How much would you pay? This was 26 pounds, 26 British pounds a night. So that's, do the maths later. Like, I don't know. Per person. <laughs> Come on, 20. 14, 14. Oh wait. <laughs> 13. I want to answer your question. Right oh now. my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 13 pounds uh, per person to have this whole place one night. It's really blowing my mind. Like, With villas at rock bottom prices like this in the middle of a tropical paradise, it's kind of hard not to get comfortable. I could definitely, definitely get used to this. I could live here. For sure. <laughs> it's literally tropical paradise. I'm just here swinging away in this hammock. It's, there's nothing better. <laughs> I'm, I'm very optimistic. My answer is yes, there is things that this island and its people could be doing in order to diverse, diversify the economy or, or bring people who are not tourists but they are um, people who, came, who come here to, to live long, to spend long time. Um, it could be people who are pensioners, it could be people who have money to spend uh, on the island and then um, stay here a little bit, um, 
people who can work like on writing a book or creators of whatever sort, this island is, is ideal for inspiration and, and for tranquility. And at the same time, it's not a sleepy place. Uh, there is community, there is things going on. Um, so if the island could shift from the short stay tourist that in fact has visited Bali and then it's a spillover down to, to Gili Ayer, to promote this place, to present this place to the world as a place uh, for people that can stay and live long here. It's a, it's a place friendly to elderly people, it's friendly for families, um, to little children. Uh, they are playing free on the street. There's no danger of them being taken by somebody or getting lost or uh, there's no cars, there's no motorized transportation, so there's less dangers as well. It's a very healthy environment for, for both the, the body and the spirit. And so if all these advantages are presented to people in Europe, in, in the Western world more generally, who I think have had enough with the lockdowns, uh, this is going to be a, um, a fantastic prospect for this island's future and the economy. Now there's a lot of other things that could uh, facilitate this process. So for instance, we've seen Barbados are doing a uh, digital nomad visa. Uh, this is not a thing in Indonesia, but maybe in exceptionally for the Gilis and a few other places in the country, if such a visa could be granted, that would definitely help a lot of people to to come and work here legally. Perhaps out of all the arguments and points of view that I had heard, this one made the most sense to me. Perhaps it's my bias. An expat myself who has come to live in paradise and try to assimilate into the local community and way of life, contributing to the local economy over the long term. This could certainly be one way to ensure a more stable economy on Gilead and the fostering of a real community that truly cares and has the best interests of the island at heart. If I was writing a book or doing something creative that required my time and concentration, or I just needed to get away, I just needed to come somewhere and chill out, this is the place to do it. I completely agree that this could be a great place for people looking to live long term and I'm kind of tempted myself. <laughs> It's just so good. <laughs> Chilling in luxury villas with private pools and sitting on swings for Instagram photos. This is the legitimate job, right? Look at that. Yes, come join me in paradise. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm not an influencer, but let me end with this. I, uh, I cannot get over how beautiful this place is. Like it's literally tropical paradise. And, you know, sitting here watching the sunrise, beautiful sunrise over Mount Rinjani. It's, uh, it's not lost on me like how unique this, this opportunity has been to, to basically have this whole island pretty much to ourselves. Um, it's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing, you know, it's, it's blown my mind how, how special it's been actually to, to be here at, at this time. I'm fully aware that once the borders open and all you guys watching this, all you keen travelers watching, once those borders open, I know you're going to be here. No two, no two ways about it. <laughs> Giliaira is, like many other tourism hotspots around the world right now, struggling. There's no denying that, but the struggle fails to take away from its beauty. The palm trees, the pristine beaches, the food, the warmth of the people, the coral. The beauty of these islands is a delicate one that needs to be protected, and the pandemic may well have been a necessary reset to facilitate that. Harus lebih berhati-hati di dalam kita melakukan pengelolaan. Kita harus bisa meng mengukur daya dukung, daya tampung di dalam kawasan. In other words, how many visitors can the islands receive and how many divers can each reef take sustainably? The path forward is not yet clear, but I know that I'll be back here many times so nice. and my only hope is that sometime soon 
you can enjoy it too. The sooner everyone can come back, I think that's for the best. Um, you know, from a selfish point of view, it's been amazing. But seeing the businesses and the livelihoods, you know, people really struggling here. Um, this is a place that is, is meant for everyone and it thrives. It's at its best when there's people coming from all over the world and enjoying, enjoying the gillies. That's when it's at its best. There's a lot of colors. I don't know where to go. See a lot of color. Only feeling blue. There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others To get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me Standing by the shore Why All there is left to say is come, um, when you can, come to the Gillies. When you're looking to book that first holiday after the pandemic, after lockdown, whenever that may be, don't forget Gilliaya, you won't regret it. <laughs> Beautiful place.